Is it somebody else's fault? Maybe. Is it still your problem to deal with? Yes. Is it my fault that my mother became an alcoholic and left me for days at a time? No. Is it my problem to deal with? Yes. Seldom are the people who are the cause of our problems also the ones to fix them. It's us. The theme, I think, of your life almost is this ultimate ownership. Like, how important is it to just have ownership over everything? It has brought me a sense of freedom. Because when you blame other people, you steal yourself, you rob yourself of the opportunity to do anything about the situation, you know? And so is it somebody else's fault? Maybe. Is it still your problem to deal with? Yes. <laughs> and so, you know, is it my fault my voice is so low? I don't know. Do I still get to deal with it? Yes. Um, I think I've just thought that, you know, is it my fault that my mother became an alcoholic and left me for days at a time? No. Is it my problem to deal with? Yes. I just, like, seldom are the people who are the cause of our problems also the ones to fix them. It's us. And I just feel like a lot of time is wasted trying to figure out who we need to blame rather than just getting to the solution. And I don't know about you, but I would rather spend a lot more time solving problems than dwelling in them. Do you think you were born with this sort of ambition to grow outside of the situation you were in? Or was it something that happened within your childhood that led you to that place? I don't think that I was born with anything. Uh, I mean, I would tell you, my dad would say differently. Um, but I actually think it was when my parents ended up getting divorced when I was, I think I was between eight and nine, uh, when they separated. And my dad ended up moving out, getting an apartment somewhere. My sister ended up leaving, going to college, because she was much older than me. And then I was stuck alone with my mom in the house when they had left. And then my mother very quickly, because of the divorce, and then very quickly after their divorce, um, her dad passed away. And she just went into like a very dark place and she turned to drugs and alcohol. And I witnessed that from day one, like the like starting to drink more than like drinking every day and then like starting to drink earlier in the day and then like until it snowballed into like a complete alcoholic. And so I actually think that that time in my life and living with her for the five years I did when she did that was probably the pivotal moment that turned me into the person I am today because until then I had been sheltered by two really amazing parents who meant well but I also think I was very sheltered um, and dependent on them and in the time that I spent living with her when she was an alcoholic you know she wouldn't come home for days on, on end she would come home and be incoherent she would not talk to me ignore me she'd always be with a boyfriend at the time uh, in and out of the bars, and I had to learn to take care of myself. And at the time, it was extremely hard, and I remember just a constant, perpetual feeling of stress, like in my body, like not being able to get rid of the feeling of just like complete anxiety, um, because I was always worried about her. I was always worried, is she gonna be okay? Is she gonna end up killing herself today? Is, you know, is she gonna end up coming home? Am I gonna be on my own? Like, what am I gonna do? Um, but what I didn't realize was that going through that for those five years taught me how to take care of myself and ultimately that I could rely on myself, which at the time, I don't think I could have known that it would do that for me. But now looking back, I see it as like, that was the moment in which it, I would say um, it was almost like a, it gave me the jump start to get to where I am today because I'm not sure that I would be able to be the leader I am if I hadn't learned how to lead myself so early on. I hope you're enjoying this Layla Hormozzi video. It was sponsored by MulliganBrothers.com where site-wide right now is buy one, get one free across all t-shirts. The mission behind the clothing brand has always been to inspire change and to be able to deliver this content on YouTube for free. This support from you guys allows us to do exactly that and get our film crew out to Las Vegas to be able to go and film Layla Hormozzi. So all t-shirts are buy one, get one free if you use code SALE at checkout. 
That includes the all new symbol designs, the Inspire Change t-shirts, the classics. Absolutely every single t-shirt in any combination is buy one get one free using code sale. Also everything across the site is now discounted from the hoodies to the posters and yes, including the journal with some heavy discounts with a link in the description. Once this is gone guys, it is gone. Thank you for supporting projects like this and we promise to continue to deliver great motivation and great inspiration. Let's jump back into the video. Could you pin down the the trait that you had or some the the thing that you had because I, you, I think you was 10 years old I, I, there's a tragic story i remember you saying in one of your videos about where you you was calling for her and it happened on multiple occasions but you'd you was trying to call for her and you couldn't get hold of her as a 10 year old um most 10 year olds i don't think would react in the same way as you did like is there something you could pin down that led you to be able to do that i was sitting in our guest room of I'm sorry when you said it, it's just like, I was sitting in the guest room of our house and I, I thought she was dead. And so I kept calling her phone and I think it was like the 20th time that I called and she didn't pick up. And then I remember thinking to myself, why do you keep calling? She's never going to pick up, she's not gonna answer. And I sat there and I remember thinking, holding the phone in my hand, I said, I'm not calling again, I'm done. And then I just thought to myself, this thought popped in my head and I said, I need to make the rest of my life so good that it makes all of this worth it. Because the pain I felt in that moment and for those years was so great. And it was also a secret I kept to myself. I didn't tell anybody because I also still loved her and I didn't want to get her in trouble or whatever that meant. But that was what stuck with me was in that moment, I thought to myself like, you have to be so good that it makes everything worth it. And I think I took that on with me in that now when I go through anything in life, I just think to myself, make it worth it. Make the dark moments worth it by doing yourself justice and getting to the other side and getting through it and not being a victim of those dark times. I don't know how a kid at that age had that thought, but I'm super grateful I did. And I remember it crystal clear. I remember holding the phone. It was one of the phones with like a huge cord and it was like yellow, banana phone, basically. Um, and I remember just sitting there, it was 3 a.m. and thinking that. And from that moment on, I felt like a sense of calmness because I thought to myself, one, no longer am I gonna keep calling. She's gonna leave. Who knows if she's gonna come back? I need to focus on myself and I need to focus on making my life better. And then the second thing was, it like lit a fire inside of me to be better. Because I feel like in that moment I saw, you know, she was a great mother to me when she was, but I saw her turn into this person that I felt was so unfamiliar to me. And the only thought I could have to myself was like, I will never do this to somebody. I never want to do this to anybody in my life and make them feel this way. And so I think what it did was that it propelled me to go in the complete opposite direction that she was in. And then I, it led me to, you know, finally getting out of her house and saying, you know what, I'm going to leave because she would say, you know, if you leave, I'm, I'm going to die. If you leave, like I have nothing left, it, my life will be over. And so it felt like, you know, in a way a threat, like, what does that mean? Your life will be over. You know, she wasn't stable. And I said to myself, I'm not your mother. <laughs> and I remember the day I was like, I'm leaving. And I'm not, I'm not coming back because at the end of the day, this is really harsh to say, but I said, if you die because of me leaving, it's not on me. I have to take care of myself. And that was kind of the mentality I took from that point out. And she didn't end up, I think, getting better, but I haven't remained in contact. I hope you enjoyed this video with Leila Hormozzi. Thank you so much for joining us. We are having an end of summer sale at mulliganbrothers.com where you can get buy one, get one free across all t-shirts from LFG to the Inspire Change, to the new Inspire Change t-shirts, to the hardest work in the room, the Rise and Grind t-shirts, everything linked down below, code sale on, and you get buy one, get one free across all t-shirts. And then also we have discounted on the posters and the Not A Journal is now discounted, link down below. 
all the profits from the sale and from the sales on the website always go back into creating this content. That's how we do this. We fly around the world because of you guys, because the movement is being supported by the Inspire Change t-shirts and the Inspire Change clothing company. So thank you so much. Have a blessed and productive day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.